<laughs> yeah. Ann Wiggins is with us. She is the co-author, along with her mother, Linda Williams, Parenting from the Heights, Take the High Road and Get Results. Ann, welcome. And I've always disliked this. Timeouts. Why don't they work? <laughs> because they're lame? <laughs> Probably part, in part that. You know, when you think of timeouts in real life and who uses them, they're cool sports people. Mm -hmm. and, and when they go to timeout, they go there to regroup so they can get back out there and do the very same thing they were doing before, just more effectively. <laughs> so we're putting our children in timeout. And, and I know I'll say that, and, and parents are saying, well, that's true, but my child doesn't even know what a timeout is. And to that I say, exactly. Well, well then they why use it if he doesn't know what it is? It's not working. I have no trouble with yeah. putting a child on a step or a mat or a mm -hmm. chair for a length of time, but you need to connect it with what they mm -hmm. did. So you have the naughty step or the tantrum place or mm -hmm. the biting chair or whatever it is that they did. And interestingly enough, when I, I teach parenting classes here in Prescott from time to time, I will have parents <coughs> come back by the second to third week and say, I used to put my kid in time out all the time, one minute per age. They didn't mind. It did nothing to stop the behavior. Now we call it the hitting mat and they hate it. <laughs> they don't want to go there because the child understands all of a sudden, yes. oh, I am being put in a place because of what I did. Uh, and yeah. what has happened to discipline in the family unit? Uh, years ago, in, in we talk about this on the show all the time, we've lost the art of discipline and it is an art. It really is an art form. I think during the 60s and 70s, a, a new wave of thinking mm -hmm. came along yeah. where you say, let the child express himself. You know, if they Wasn't need that to get doctor Spocks. Yes, I believe. Yes, I think <laughs> it was. I'm glad to say that. Yeah. And and so what happened was children practiced being out of control. The mm -hmm. more you do something, the better you get at it. Mm -hmm. Your testimony mm -hmm. to that that this is natural for you. You're so good at it. You hardly have to think about it, and you just do it because you've been doing it for a number of years. Well, when you practice being out of control over and over and over, it becomes second nature mm -hmm. to be that way. So we've raised a generation of people who really have very little self-control, and mm -hmm. There's very now little they're parenting, parent. but, but now, I, I hate to inter uh, I interrupt all the time. But now those same people from the 60s are parenting children. Some of those people in the 60s are even grandparents of some of these people yeah. now. That is so true. And because of that, we look around to our culture to say, what do I do? And there's nothing to grab onto to help mm -hmm. you parent well. So everyone is doing one minute per age time out because that's what everyone does. Mm -hmm. And so everyone goes, oh, okay. And that's what we do. Everyone grounds and so that's what we do. I know uh, as a child when my dad gave me a look, he didn't have to say anything to me. He just gave me that look. How important is the nonverbal? We call that the stare of terror. <laughs> we use that from time to time at our own house. Um, the like nonverbal communication is absolutely foundational when you're parenting. I observe parents from time to time in stores or just out and and they will say things like okay now let's put on our coat okay so come on over here let's put on your coat and they have this sing-songy voice that you use with babies very effectively little babies need that we, I don't know, we mothers just kind of gravitate right, towards right. that with small children. Exactly. But once they hit age two or so, get rid of that sing-song voice. In your voice. Absolutely. Um, just a, they think it's just playtime, don't well, they? Absolutely. They think you're on their level. They're, yeah. You're up here, so it's no different than their friend saying, hey, you want to put your coat on? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> when I was sitting this in... This is mom <laughs> telling you to put your coat on absolutely. here. Absolutely. <laughs> so what you say is, is instead of, you know, why, why don't we put on our coats, okay? You just, you get eye contact if you need to get down on the child's level that's mm -hmm. helpful too mm -hmm. not to get in their face but just mm -hmm. to you know so they can see and you say listen to me put your coat on go and they know and I you know I don't have a really burlesque voice but no but I would I would pay attention okay. to that see? you go yeah <laughs> you were authoritative yeah. you were it was no messing around with it no sing-song it was very right to the point absolutely when I was sitting in the audience I, I made a boo-boo and I thought oh well here I am to talk about parenting and here I am doing it incorrectly my my children are here with me yes. and my my little boy had a, innocently had an empty water bottle he'd stuck it in his mouth, he's nine, and was, you know, turning his head around, and there's nothing wrong with that. I wasn't upset, it wasn't naughty, it was just childish, but I could envision the bottles, you know, going across the floor and making yes. noise during yes. your other segment. And so I decided that I would have him um, <laughs> put the bottle in the trash can. So I said quietly to him, why don't you go put that bottle in the trash can? How stupid, and, he, and he, the bottle's still in his mouth, and he goes, <laughs> and I thought, phrased completely wrong, and I said, put the bottle 
in the trash can. He said, oh, like, oh, I didn't know you meant it. <laughs> I didn't know that it wasn't like a the choice. Definitive. It's the definitive. Yeah. Put it and, in. And Don't leave it open-ended. That's when they think they begin to rule, isn't it? When we uh, when we kind of back away. What about Maybe. tough tough love? Is uh, A lot of parents would say, well, that's tough love, and I want my child to be my best friend. Well, your child can be your best friend when they're adults, if you raise them well. Right now, they have lots of friends and one mom and one dad. So be the parent. You have to parent now. If you don't do that, what will happen is you'll be their best friend. You'll have, I don't know, lots of fun times, I guess. And then they will hit the teen years and the natural consequences that you have not bothered to impose will start to kick in. Drug addiction, teenage pregnancy, um, other addictions. And now you have no control over these consequences and it impacts the rest of their lives. So what you want to do as a parent is say, I'm looking down the road, I'm trying to see the destination here for you, and I have goals, I have dreams for your life. I want you to be kind, I want you to be respectful, I want you to be obedient. And so I will help you do the things to get there so when you're an adult, you will be successful in real life. Uh, the input from your mother, the inspiration for the book. Oh, well, my mom and I have been doing child rearing classes, me and Prescott, her in Cleveland, for a number of years. And we would get done with these classes and people would say to us, oh, I wish you had this in book form. Or, you know, later they'd say, I, I need to take your class again because I can't remember everything. I took notes, but I don't. And so we talked about it and, and she came to visit me last July. And the second day here, we sat down on my patio and I said, well, Here's a laptop, let's go. <laughs> and, and we'll just see if we can put this together. And it took us about a month to really get the book written and then editing after Does that. Does it start from, uh, from infancy and move forward? You know, we really say uh, this is more about age two and up okay. through the teen years. Um, we don't deal a lot with babyhood. I hope you deal a lot with the teens because that's really when the child becomes rebellious, isn't it? Yes, they can become out of control. I think if you have not laid the foundation, it's that's out of control fine. enough. Every, every teenager, no matter no matter what. <laughs> but it doesn't have but to be that But it doesn't have way. to be like that, especially yes. if you give that foundation when they're very young. Exactly. Again, what have they been practicing? You know, there may be parents listening right now going, is it too late for me? My kid is 13, mm. my kid is 15, my kid is 18. Is it and too out late? Of control. And completely out of control. I would just say to you, it's never too late. I would I would never write off a child. Never. Mm -hmm. I will go after them <laughs> to get them on track no matter what the cost is to me personally. But you have to say, what if they practice for 15 years? What if they practice for 17 mm -hmm. years? And it's going to take a lot to turn that around because it's second nature for right, them. You can't do it overnight no. what it has taken 13 years to, to go into place. No. Right. Parenting from the Heights, the co-author is Ann Wiggins. You stay right there.